Okay, I'll start out by confirming uh, with you. Does anyone have any doubt on how to operate a 148 radio, a 117 and a 119? So, Sergeant Robert, how do you turn up the power on, uh, on a 148 radio? 148? What's gonna... I have... I can't really do it because I don't have the radio. Tell me how okay. you're doing it. I got it. Okay. Wait, I can't really call it at the moment. I can do it. 148, you hit mode twice, set the power to 5000, hit enter. Exactly. I only do 117. Pfeiffer, how do you turn up power on uh, 117? Uh, the 117, it's the. Uh, you have to pre program for each channel, I believe. Yes. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly. It's like. In eight off the numpad, and then like enter, enter, and then you choose like the power slot, and then you just turn up to 20,000. Exactly. Okay. And Rich, how do you turn up the power on the 119? Yeah. Yeah. That's extremely fucking easy. You just click it until it says uh, HE for high, or like HI for high. Awesome. Um, uh, do uh, can anyone explain to me what the, a rebroadcasting station is? It basically takes takes what you broadcast and broadcasts it onto another channel. Yeah, exactly. That is for for instance, if you look at us, those big ass mountains behind you. If uh, we were to reach someone on the other side of those mountains, that would be virtually impossible with the radios that we have. So in order to do that effectively, we would have to place a retransmit, uh, retransmit station on top of that mountain. This would be that we would, if we were to send our signal on channel 1, then it would retransmit that signal onto channel 2 by using two different radios. This would allow us uh, to contact other elements on the other side of the hill using their channel 2. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Nice. No, you can set it uh, in any way you want, technically, but uh, it doesn't make sense to do so. Wait, is this a person that, or like a thing? That uh, that can be an auto system, or it can be a person. Okay. If you re okay. If you retransmit on the same channel, um, you can end up with sideband interference. So, um, it could yeah, be I'm getting to that later. Frequency. Okay, sorry. Yes. Um. We're gonna start off with the basics of communications. We have, uh, what's it called? We have a word for that. We call them the ABCs of communication. Can anyone tell me what the ABCs stand for? Accuracy, gravity, and clarity. Oh, someone's been really uh, brushing up. Nice. Okay, Craig, can you explain to me what the uh, accuracy means in this uh, in this uh, term? Well, so you're. Yeah, Craig, I think. Craig. Are you accurate? Say, like, what uh, matters, not bullshit. Yes. For instance, accuracy. If you see, uh, if you see an enemy unit, you are and you need to be accurate about what kind of enemy unit it is. It doesn't help that you're just saying enemies. That's not accurate information. Accurate <laughs> information would be two BTR seventies. That's accurate information. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yes. Instead of saying tank, you say T-72. Yeah, or you give, give out the information that you can, but accurate information. You don't uh, invent anything, you don't assume anything, you save exactly what you know. Yes, Robert? I'm just waving at all. Okay, then don't do that. Okay, brevity. Can anyone explain to me why we would want uh, to be brief in our conversations? Because uh, people will probably be trying to get in radio messages behind you. The, the more concise your radio message is, the better it is for future comms. Exactly. We want uh, we want brief conversations so that other people uh, people can communicate. Because this isn't like cell phones. This doesn't allow us to, uh, all, all of us to talk at once. The radio only allows uh, on the radio net only allows one call, a call sign to talk at a time, because of how ra radios work. Last thing is clarity. 
Can anyone, can uh, fucking Colossal explain to me what clarity means? Yeah, it means that you talk with a uh, clear voice so everyone understands it and... Yes, right, Lava. Uh, in addition, um, Claire, to use words that people understand, don't try and get too tactical. Um, there's a lot of words that people use without knowing exactly what they mean, so keep it simple. Yeah, exactly. So basically, what we need uh, when we're doing radio communication is to get as much accurate information out as fast as possible without confusing anyone with this kind of information. This is the basics of uh, any uh, so uh, sort of communications within any army unit or marine unit or wherever the fuck you're from. You need to be accurate in the uh, accurate, brief, and clear when you're giving out the uh, communication. This also relates to information filtering. What does that mean? Uh, fucking rich. Yes. Exactly. When you, if you tell the tell your commander that you're in contact with an enemy squad, then don't add if you saw another guy. Add if uh, it's getting supported by another squad now, but don't add the uh, simple un uh, uninteresting th uh, things to the uh, to the information that because uh, it gives uh, the leaders what's called helmet fire, and it basically means that they're getting so much information that their brain can't handle it, and they kind of shut down. I'm sure that some of you have actually had that happen before. Yes, Red Lover. Yeah, um, how many people here have uh, platoon led in a mission with more than three squads? Uh, I did have. he just cut out for you? Uh oh. I think the cutout bug got fixed. But um, Or even squad lead. Squad leaders almost have it worse than platoon leaders do in that um, they have radio chatter in their uh, short range and long range. So, yeah, you want to keep your nets clear because as a platoon leader, um, that you're going to be reporting up to or as the platoon leader when you're playing as a PL. It can get really, really confusing trying to manage multiple nets with uh, different units transmitting lengthy messages. Exactly. Okay. Then we'll talk about um, some of the components of all radio transmissions. For a radio transmission you'll need a call sign. Um, Sonic, can you explain me uh, explain what a call sign means? It's uh, a name that uh, kind of simply defines what type of unit you are. Like uh, Hawk being, say, a helicopter. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily define the type of unit, but it defines uh, it defines your unit. So, for, for instance, that you're in a, a mechanized infantry company and your call sign is Char uh, and Charlie Company, then that is your call sign. That's what the, the entire company is called. They will respond to Charlie on the radio. Then uh, you can have uh, top call signs. Can uh, fucking Wahali explain to me what that is? A sub call sign. So, yeah, if, if uh, we're Charlie, then we might have Charlie 1, Charlie 2, or 1-1, uh, or 1-2 as, uh, say, uh, each of the fire teams or somewhere. Exactly. This is used to, um, to make it... Um, yeah, I know they can, and in Canada they m most definitely they do, but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but yeah. Yes. Did everyone see Red Lover's text there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I know, I would use uh, Cedric's little example there. Uh, uh, in Canada, they define the units by the f first letter. For instance, if some, uh, a unit starts out with Alpha, that means it's, a, uh, it's an armored call sign. So Alpha 1, 2 would be an armored call sign, first company, second platoon, for instance. Uh, they, and they also use... Um, India for infantry, so in, uh, India 2-2, two, two. that's an, in, uh, infantry comp uh, an infantry second company, second platoon. Echo engineer, oh wait, Alpha wasn't the, uh, uh, the armor call sign, that, that was Tango for tank. But, Is it A, Alpha but, for air? I can't remember. Yeah. They had all this kind of fucking retarded bullshit that, they, that uh, Canadians think, uh, think is smart. Uh, 
I don't <laughs> know if any other country in the world does that, but uh, they find it pretty clever. Okay, so yeah, call signs can designate unit type, especially uh, agreed upon in, in advance. I think the Americans have a sort of system for that too, what, uh, what you can call an armor unit and what you can call an armor unit, and so on. I just pasted a link in channel that is the normal call signs used by the U.S. Thank you, genius. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of, uh, I think these are mostly aircraft. Let me see if I can find the other one. I've got a couple yeah. of them marked. Um, the one that Janus just posted um, has to do with call signs that people listening on the radio, so like ham radio operators, um, have identified for the airspace in uh, the United States. So those are call signs that certain aircraft flying regular missions out of certain Air Force bases will use. Okay. Anyways, anyone still confused about what a call sign is and what it means? Nice. God, Andy, you might just want to cover at least like five sixes and X-rays, just because those are really basic ones that I know at least me, Weapon, and a couple other guys tend to use a lot. Yeah, fair enough. Um, let's say we have uh, our first platoon. That call, uh, the platoon's call sign is. Uh, Three two because it's third com uh, three one because it's third company first platoon. Then inside the first platoon we have an additional uh, subnet on which we have one for first squad, two for second squad, third for fourth squad, of al uh, alpha delta uh, whatever, and fourth. This also demonstrates. Uh, not real. That uh, doesn't really de demonstrate channel plan. Yeah, uh, I just brought it up because last night I noticed some people got confused with me calling Jake five and other people calling me six. They got slightly confused. So, if you guys wonder why people call each other five or six without that call sign being called out in the command and signal, that usually means it's the two IC or the actual you know leader. So, Godhand, um, if I may interject, uh, that task organization that you said is wrong. Um, the company. Um, which we don't use in Arma nearly as much. Um, we'll have all signs, so it'll. Um, then within that, you have your platoon. So first platoon of battle company would be battle one. Um, so the platoon leader of the of the first platoon battle company would be battle one actual. Um, and then within that, the squads would be Battle 1-1, one, one, Battle 1-2, one, Battle 1-3. Okay, I'm just basing this um, off uh, WAC, uh, what I've learned from WAX, and almost all WAX have uh, company call signs and numbers too. 